Okay, so we're playing a 45-15 game. So we're playing question mark 1275 and 1100, 1100. So instantly when you look at this type of level, players will go, ah, oh, well, I'd berserk this one, berserk, because, you know, they feel confident that they're going to win. I do the reverse. Yep, I say to myself, well, this person obviously doesn't play online that often, or they're practicing some new skills. This is why their rating is low and they don't mind losing. So they're practicing some new stuff, quirky stuff, and they're just using this account to practice that stuff on. So I've got different mindset to these types of situations. Just because the opponent's rating is low does not mean that they're rubbish until they show it, <laughs> you know. So we're x-raying through onto the king, as we do usually. And I'm really loving the exercises that we're doing, you know, looking at the 1300 games, looking at the well, 1300, 1400 games and the 1500 games. Because doing like exercises like those really does actually help your own game. Don't mean you're winning all your games, but I, I'm looking at my games, the long play games that I've been playing in between these um, sessions, and I'm feeling more relaxed in my movements because I'm actually picking out things, you know, from those sessions you know, the 1300, the 1400, 1500 sessions, and I'm saying, well, I really don't want to play like that. I don't want to do that. I want to play a little bit better. I want to use the answer process that I'm personally working on. So it really does help. And I'm thankful that we do have this this platform to, to actually view people playing um, so that you can actually learn from it. It might be a different way that people may not be interested in looking at other people's games to um develop you know you might be insular and say well no i'm keeping everything secret you know that type of stuff everybody works in the different ways but as part of the answer process it's about researching and keeping that research up to date all the time so if i get a shocked if i get shocked in any of the so okay hold on so brought the knight out there they're, they're very patient as well these, these players this player is so his knight's not actually attacking anything at the moment. So we could go and castle. So I'm going to castle because there's potential for putting a little bit of hit, hit onto the king. So that's one of the key things, um, especially from the learning uh, from the session so far, is, is around castling, keeping the king safe as early as possible, if you can, if it's safe to do so. Because I won't castle if I feel that there's a shift or they've got this pawn open or whatever then I will take my time and probably castle on the queen side it all depends how the game is going so if I have to get to move 15 or 17 or whatever it is without castling there's a very valid reason and it's the fact that the potential for them exploding on whichever side of the board and getting an advantage will cost me if I castled on that side and that's very different to what we see within the 1300, 1400, 1500 sessions that we've seen so far. They just seem to be left there forever and a day. So simple is castling, king safety, and then supporting your king, trying to not leave it home alone by actually doing loads of attacks that fizzle out and then leave your king home alone and then you have no protection for it. I'm seriously going to get a sore throat after doing all these sessions. But they are so enjoyable. So it's got a nice pace. It's got a very nice pace. And you still have to be mindful. Because they're only a grandmaster until they show they're a grandmaster. If you know what I mean. Yeah, Everybody's equal until they're shown not to be equal. So it's coming out quite nicely. So he's, he is looking to go and castle. Okay, so the bishop is here. It's targeting this area. Could just bring our bishop through here. I don't need to delay, delay that really. And x-ray through to the queen. So it's x-ray through to a higher piece. So that's pretty straightforward. 
but if once they castle then we can take the knight and then double the pawns here so it's something to think about could have actually put the rook here putting a check on to prevent the castling sort of thing for a moment but I thought well let's just be gentle with this player and just take our time don't want to over egg it because it is a nice position this rook check here the bishop usually comes back then the queen comes here putting putting pressure on the pawn it's not actually doing that okay so we can just bring the bishop here just bring it back or we can take the knight and double the pawns i'm going to take the knight and double the pawns on this side here so the smallest tiniest of advantages but as you know it's not a terrible weakness if you like having the open half open files for your rooks i'm hoping that level of this type of player um will panic and not see that as an advantage okay so we need to move the bishop so move the bishop back could have put the check again like we said with the rook but i'm wanting to allow them to at least take the moment to castle i thought they would, yes so they've castled now okay so i'm happy now so let's just bring the knight through here and let's see how they work their pieces hopefully together so we we get a nice game going and and they may get some advantages and stuff i mean already they've the pace at which they've gone is really quite nice and now he's attacking the knight it's all simple stuff and even like the 1500s that we saw weren't playing like this basics you know just using simple basics I'm gonna bring the queen up so protecting the knight Got ideas but I really don't like taking my queen away from the other you know from my king side area but it has potential for coming here to attack the pawn but because it's so easily oh so yeah like we um, we've not done like an 1100 or 1200 thing have we and I did have a good video on 1100s when I was struggling to get past the 1100 so it's like I can't believe that these guys are this strong and one of the main things out of it all was they were just monsters at just taking pieces off the board and then you were left with nothing you know the 1100s were like absolute beasts but the positions weren't very good you know when they were ended up after they're just like bang 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 but it was so awesome when they were doing it i thought their positions were good but after analysis um I realized it wasn't as clever so we could take pawn takes I don't think the pawn will take I think the Queen will take but then we'll end up with some double pawns on this side as well yep so I'm going to take I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible I'm not doing anything fancy here like we let we allowed them to castle um, in real terms I would have brought this there and we would have had pressure on his bishop so then he, he, he wouldn't have been going castling so it's a strong maneuver is that but we're playing nice steady he may not entertain anything like that and just but doubling up the pawns on here doesn't mean we've won the game just because he doubled pawns we've got to make sure that we're clear there because he can still maneuver the pawns down and support them he's got a bishop so he can probably just lock them all in with the bishop so let's knock that on the head straight away just because i'm doubling his pawns does not mean i'm winning we're wanting to have a good practice session um, with this 1200 with a base of 1100 and 777 type thing so a proper um proper low level low rated player if you want to call them that and we're looking at their traits and we're already impressed with their traits as compared to like the 1500s the 1300s and the 1400s that we've actually seen because the key thing was 
they actually got castled, their king was safe. We've dishevelled that a little bit, but it doesn't mean we've won anything at the moment because I haven't got my rooks linked up. He's now got access to these half open files. So we're going to have to adjust a little bit. So we're going to lose a bit of tempo defending this pawn. So that's my creative brain going, well, you've actually given them gold here by giving them half open files. What are you doing? <laughs> Just have me. Yeah, so now he's freeing up the double pawn situation. Like we said, just because we, we've got the double pawns doesn't mean we've won anything. So we're bringing the knight here, attacking the bishop, also attacking the pawn. I think he'll still take the pawn now because the pawn... Ooh, okay. Um, so if we go here, we're attacking a higher piece, and then we're swinging around and then attacking the bishop. He moved a bit quick there now. Ah, I bit my tongue. Ah, 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 that hurt. He moved a bit quick there. So the knight potentially, knights hunt the bishops in our mantra. So I'm hoping they're not going, they're, they're not now sort of going through meltdown because they were doing really well. Um, our concern is obviously he's taken here, he's going to have a pass pawn. So we're going to attack the bishop first. And he's still going to have a pass pawn even if we take and the bishop's highly elevated. So that's all really good. It's good for them, says my creative brain. My logical brain is going, well, you could do have these pawns that you can push up here, dude, so you don't need to panic too much. Okay, so the bishop comes back here. And is there something better? Do we want to attack? I really want to probably... Hmm, Maybe we keep the knight here for now then, supporting just in case he takes, and then we just attack his rook. Yeah, does that seem better? Because if we take, then we're elevating his bishop a little bit, and then he's pushing here. I might be wrong, but let's just attack the rook, keep it simple. He doesn't have to take, he can move it somewhere. Well, not there, but... And then we'll try and do the basics of going for doubling. Okay, so we've got that situation. Does he have a pin through with his bishop? Let's take this pawn because we were concerned, but then does he attack us here? He does attack us there. So I'm actually just bringing here, attacking the bishop. Again, bishop probably comes back, or does he just take the rook off the board? Oh, I don't even want to take it. So we'll take the bishop here. Ah, we're doing so well as well. So yeah, this... I liked his moves. I liked what he did. It was a lot better than the 1500s that we've seen. And now it's kind of all falling apart now. So we'll put a check on the king, also attacking the rook. So this one was, was about definitely placement of pieces, working pieces together, and yeah, the moving dead quick now. So we could attack the pawn, or we could take this pawn here and attack the pawn, and take this pawn. Okay, and then get the knight to safety now. Let's just bring it down and get our king up. And let's push here. Get our king up, maybe here. Let's push onto this pawn before he starts getting ideas. Let's push up. So the king is going to have to babysit this pawn forever and a day now. 
so we can now start pushing probably going to resign at this stage yes yeah, so um, let's push again could have taken but let's give them some hope let's push 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 and there's no stalemates he can still move there yeah queen me let's give a bit of a check let's come here and check on them up a little bit so then we attack grab a pawn and then bring the knight across uh, ooh, it said take them but no and then we grab so this is all pretty straightforward stuff at this moment in time and it's just about position on the board we didn't do anything special at all it was more position looking to hold those positions and eventually I mean all of these were on a plate for us you know we didn't create any of that it was uh, just a matter of understanding what your pieces can do and just taking advantage of them so I really enjoyed that and so that's the difference between like um, 1200 I mean this 1100 1200 um, they're obviously attempting to utilize the concepts that they've basic concepts that they've learned but it's about really sort of meshing it all together you know doing it in the right move order doing it in the right way um, so the elements of teamwork really don't hit in really there is more I've seen 1100 I've seen some seriously powerful 1100s and you sit there and you go I don't understand why you're an 1100 but then as the game develops you see why you know and they might they they might enjoy being 1100 you know they might not want to go any further because they're happy with the way that they play and they can beat some high level players you know shocking them with their unusual directness uh, but for longevity um they would lose if they were playing 10 games against say like a 1600 um the 1100s um they would probably lose maybe about seven or eight of those games and they'll probably like win maybe or draw three of them but during the process they would look awesome in each of the games but they would eventually lose because they don't mesh their pieces together as good as they could do if they wanted to get better and improve and uh, like i say some are just happy just causing mayhem and create <laughs> just creating trouble for people uh, they're just loving they love the idea of oh well this piece does this this piece does that and yeah bam 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 and they don't care about any fancy positions um if they can shake up a few people along the way then they're all well and good so when you meet somebody like that uh, and you're playing them you know especially over online you, you definitely question what is going on here some people have been 1100s for years you know so <laughs> but you can be an absolutely dynamic 1100 over those years you've learned that i don't really want to work my pieces together but i tell you what i've got my own concept of how i can cause trouble against you little smart sods going up into the 1600s etc you know so never be un never underestimate a player's skills i didn't underestimate this player's skills i thought they played really well i was really quite nice it was a good clean game and to really be playing better than the 1500s and the 1300s and the 1400s that we have witnessed in these sessions has to be saying something and this person's base type average rating is 1100 hmm something to think about